I think a lot of sleep issues may have an underlying medical factor accounting for that sleep issues. Certainly not all. We can't explain all sleep issues. I'm going to show you myself. When my hug gave me a big Simba, my name is Simba. When yellow hugs blue, and you get the color green. <laughs> We know, for instance, that acid reflux is one factor that accounts for sleep disturbance in some kids. We also know that if kids are profoundly constipated and they're holding stool, for instance, a lot of times they will go to sleep and pass a stool in the night, which really disrupts sleep. So there are a number of gastrointestinal issues that sort of bring out those sleep disturbances. Uh, reflux is certainly the most common one and so one of the things that we ask about when we're trying to understand sleep issues is what's going on with those sleep hours. Does the child go to sleep well? Does the child go to sleep well but then wake later? Can the child have difficulty going to sleep? All of those differences in, in sleep induction and sleep maintenance may impact what you think about as a medical factor that could be accounting for those problems. So Wyatt, as an example, is a wonderful uh, uh, candidate to think about acid reflux. That child did not sleep uh, a full night for his entire life. And he came to see us for issues that might be GI related and we felt at least one of the possible reasons that he might have sleep disturbance based on other clinical presentation that he had was the idea that he might be having acid reflux. And we started him on reflux treatment. We had to make some adjustments in his treatment program, but finally on a proper acid reflux treatment and addressing abdominal pain issues, he has a sleep pattern. And now he's sleeping through the night and his parents are sleeping through the night. And when we look at how well children function in a classroom, we know the impact on the classroom is so impacted by the amount of sleep that kids get at night. We also know that kids who don't get a good night's sleep and adults who don't get a good night's sleep have remarkably diminished attention and focus issues during their waking hours. So we are very focused on trying to figure out those factors that are accounting for sleep. And sleep disturbance occurs in more than 50% of children who have autism. I don't want to own all of that. I don't think all of those children have acid reflux, but we need to look at the medical factors that we can impact that might account for some of those sleep disturbances.